Don't give up on us eBay. We need to list for success. So don't give up on us eBay. We've come too far this time. Dee da. Now, I need a shave, but I'm not I'm too busy. Too much. Too much has happened this week. Too much. It's time for the weekly uh, updates. We've got all the stuff. We've got the usual claptrap. Got a bit of eBay talk just to lighten the mood, you know. Um, got a bit of a comment on uh, another very interesting video from over in the US by Craigslist Hunter that I've just watched and my thoughts on the matter. We've got eBay rules and it's antiquities today and it's quite a good one actually, there's quite a lot on that. So we'll go through that. Um, and we've got the figures. But before all of that, not even got a low alcohol beer because it was rainy when I went to the post office today and I thought, just can't be bothered going to Asda. I'm just going to leave it. There's plenty of stuff in the house. We'll live off our rations. So, I am on, you know, getting, getting a bit avant-garde here now. A bit bourgeoisie. You know. Well, we have the Sam Pellegrino, lemon and tea. I've never drunk tea in my life, but I do like these cold drinks of tea. But the most impressive thing about this drink that I love is the fact it's got a little posh wrapper on top of the can there. Stop you getting infections and stuff. You know, pull that off there, that little, that'll be collectible one day. Keep that to one side. Start selling them for 10 quid each in about 15 years' time. Or, or Edward can if I'm dead. Right. So, lemon tea, San Pellegrino. Very refreshing. Now, if I start talking Italian after this, it's obviously got side effects. Bellissimo. Yeah, it's nice, that. Right. Bravo. Fiat and Alfa Romeo. That's about as much Italian as I know for this time of night. Right. So, we're on week 12 after coming out of hospital. We're just, well, we've just finished week 12. So, what's happened? Now, you may remember, Kitty Wiggs, last week, that I did £3,107, which was my. Record breaker. Spot there, we know. Let's have a look at that. Right. Yeah, so that was my record breaker. Well, I thought nothing could top that. I can't top that. I mean, eventually I want to get up to three and a half grand a week as an average. So some weeks will be two and a half, some weeks will be four and a half, and it'll average out at three and a half. Well, I thought 12, 18 months in the future. Gotta be. I still think that. We may have just had a flash in the pan. But we've done a lot of listing. Again. And we're putting on some good, good gear at the moment. Really well. We, the last 12 months we put the quality of the gear has gone through the roof. We've still got a load of average stock knocking about as well. Which were listed as well. But we're putting a lot of high, higher end items. Not higher end, but... More interesting items, I should say. Put a bit of more variety on the store. Anyway, let's get to the figures. I'm starting to sound like ads, aren't I? You know, rambling off into a, di uh, a different direction. Uh, I might give you my views on the meaning of life in a bit. And, uh, you know, my existential views on, on, on things. But, you know, maybe not. Right, so the figures, last week, which was the previous week from our last video, 3,107. This week, do we need a bugle for this? 3,746. How do you like that? Uh, averaging £535 a day. £35 a day over the ultimate target 
Obviously, next week's going to be crap. You know, we can't. You know, this has got to end. But the ninety-day total last week, the ninety-day total, because obviously it's a running thing. Days are dropping off. There's like when it goes into Saturday, that becomes like uh, day. How, which way would they do it? So as Saturday comes on, there'll be a day dropping off at the other end. So if the ones dropping off at the other end are lower than the days that are coming on at this end, it creeps up. Obviously, if you've had a really good period and the days on the other three months previously were higher, as those days go on, those high days are dropping off and crap days are coming on, so it'll go down. It's an average. But, you know, you'll get a more accurate... Uh, view of your business if you look at the average over 3 months 12 months, this year against last year, etc etc it's more concrete than just like oh yeah we had a boss week this week, you know, it doesn't matter because this week's gone now we're on to next week aren't we so yeah, 3,746 for the week, the 90 day total last week our 90 day average was 27,800 so just over 9 grand uh, every month that has gone up considerably because a lot of rubbish days must have dropped off from the beginning part and some good days have come on I think we've got another week of rubbish days to go off uh, which was the week before I came out of hospital I think they'll be going off this week bit by bit so the 90 days now is 30,162, so that's an average of 10 grand a month, or just over 10,050. I'm happy with that, we're going in the right direction. Stock listed. Last week we had £362,000 worth of stock, well, £362,808.16. pence. This week I've, I've forgot about the pence. Oh, I should have put them on, but never mind. Well, this week we've got 368,769. So £5,963 extra on the listed. Plus we've sold 3706 So we've listed £9,709 worth of stock this week. So we've put about another ten grand's worth on this week. And they'll probably be the same next week. Um, just another load of... Uh, bigger items. I still did not done those shipping postcards from last week. Uh, they're here. I'm probably going to scan them tomorrow and bang them on. That that'll be a quick, easy listing. But uh, you know they're not fast sellers. They're just like steady. So I've got them to do. I'll do them next. Uh, and of, well, first of all, I'm going to do this. I've got a bag of photographs there that I'm going to put on. They're, all, they're mainly World War Two. But the bonus of these is they're all written on the back where they are. So that's brilliant. So I'll do them. So we've been selling a lot of photographs recently, so I need to top that up a bit. And then I'll go back onto the, the good stuff, you know, the military and the transport stuff and all the other stuff we do. Um, bought a few reference books this week as well because uh, of all the shipping stuff that we've been buying. We need to know what flags mean, what, what companies and what have you. So anyway, pleased with all that. Um... I forgot to do the Churchill and the Wild uh, quotes. I'm sure you're going to uh, be absolutely distraught over that, aren't you? But we'll have to do that another week. Uh, get rid of that. So, the poem. Uh, we've got a John Cooper Clark poem. Let's have a look. If I can find it. Yeah, oh yeah. I've not done this one for a, before, obviously, because I try not to repeat them. Um, and it's called Conditional Discharge, so you can guess what it's about yourself on this one. Satisfaction comes and goes, biological action cannot be froze, a sexual recharge, a plug in a socket, conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. More on the sick, down on the dumps, visit the clinics where the stethoscopes jump. On love sick side effects, side effects, tell me what was it, conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. The memory lingers in the clean routine, another man's fingers under my jeans. They gave me a card, some antibiotics, said conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. 
Satisfaction comes and goes. Biological action cannot be froze. A sexual recharge, a plug in a socket, conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. See, obviously he's repeated these. Is he repeats it twice that that verse? Anyway, back to it. A random fuck, dirty sheets, a crack in a cup, a lavatory seat. I'm in the dark about where I got it. Conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. Sexual freedom left me alone in the Garden of Eden syndrome. It's on the cards, you'll come across it. A conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. The ups and downs of times like these. Fucking around is a social disease. When the public at large don't know that they've got it. Conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. A problem of leisure measured in turns. A pain plus pleasure plus poison sperm. Take this diagram, keep it in your pocket. Conditional discharge, a sticky deposit. So obviously, that is a poem about STDs. Well, that's what they're called these days. When I was a kid, they were called VD. You know, it's STD now, isn't it? Or S no, it's not. It's not STD anymore, is it? It's STI now, isn't it? You know, like the old. Uh, Subaru Impreza STI. Uh, well, they don't make that anymore. So now they've turned the disease into the STI, haven't they? So it's uh, sexually transmitted infections. Uh, before that, it was sexually transmitted diseases. And when I was a kid, it was VD. Venereal disease. Shows how old I am, doesn't it? And I remember they did us a film. Uh, got us all in the school hall and did a film on VD. We were about 15 or something like that. I think about three girls fainted uh, during that film because it was a bit gruesome. Seepage and stuff. Anyway, so that's that done. We've done that. Can't do church for a while because I forgot. So, we're going to do the eBay rules. We're going to do this talk about is reselling on the way out. Or, not is reselling on the way out, is reselling YouTube on the way out, according to Craigslist Hunter. Are people giving up? Well, I don't think they are. I think people always give up, and you won't start. And, that. and a lot of people haven't given up. They're just not making videos. Uh, a lot of people keeping things to themselves these days, etc., uh, etc. Et but we'll go into that afterwards. So, we'll do the song lyrics, get them out of the way. Um, and I think that's why I didn't put the Churchill things on because I'm going to do the first one in the style of Winston Churchill um, just let's see if he can rock it up he'll be reading it as though he was to give it as a speech well he won't be reading it he's dead, died in 1965, two years before I was born but anyway let's get practicing Yes. Ah. Yep. Ah. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's try. Yep. Seek him here. Seek him on the highway. Never do when he'll appear. All await. Engines ticking over. Hear the roar. Hear the sense of fear. Wheels. A glint of steel. And a flash of light. Screams from the streak. Of the fire he strikes, because he's hell bent for leather, hell bent for leather, hell bent for leather. Right, so that's that one. Now the next one I'm going to do not do in a Churchill style again because that took effort, and I've got a lot of e a lot of stuff to do this week. I'll have a shave. I should have had a shave for a quad, shouldn't I? Anyway, forget about that. Right, so the next one is a classic. Two big versions of this. Probably more than that, but the ones I can think of are Brian Ferry and Roxy Music and also Grace Jones, who was, when I was growing up, was one of my uh, guilty pleasures, Grace Jones. I wouldn't mind having a bit of Grace. I wouldn't mind her slapping me around a bloody wrestling ring for half an hour. 
I always remember when she gave Russell Harty a slap on that chat show. That was funny. Anyway. So here we go. Tain't no big thing to wait for the bell to ring. Tain't no big thing the toll of the bell. Aggravated spare for days. I troll downtown in a red light place. Jump up, bubble up, what's in store? Love is the drug and I need to score. Show it out, show it out, hit and run. Boy meets girl where the beat goes on. Stitched up tight, can't shake free. Love is a drug, gonna hook on me. Oh, catch that buzz. Love is the drug that I'm thinking of. Yeah, so that's that. So obviously, that was Love is a Drug. Which I always love at the beginning of that one. The intro into Love is a Drug. If you've never... Love is the Drug, I should say. If you've never heard it, it starts off. And it goes... Doo -doo, just like that. And then all year is like these footsteps. A car door open. And then you hear the car start up. And it sounds like a... Sounds like a V8 Merc or something. Boom. Oh, it's going down the street. It's going for it. He's, cru he's cruising for... Uh, he's cruising for looking for some woman or something. But it's a really, really atmospheric song. Love that. Love is a drug. Roxy Music. Any of you new kids, you want to start going through back through back catalogues. Roxy Music. You know, one of the best. Really good. Brian Ferry. Uh, one of my favourites. So uh, there's a straight sensation. Going through the nation to the Strandler if you feel good. I don't know why I did that. Anyway, but I never do, do I? This bloody hole in my head is hurting today as well because my glasses have stuck into it. Anyway, so that's that. Now, the first one that we did the Churchill style was only Judas Priest, El Ben for Leather. El <laughs> Ben for Leather. So, anyway, right. Before we go on to the eBay rules, first thing, football update tomorrow. R5. At the empty had, as the papers call it. Even though the official, uh, this is always gets me this, when they go, oh, empty seats. First of all, the newspapers take a picture when half the people have left. Because at City, like, you know, we're all busy, we're max, we've got things to do, you know what I mean? We're not going to fucking stand around here, we're five nil up, fuck that, we're off. Going into town, we've got to, you know, get a few scoops, score a few E's, you know. I mean, drug use in Manchester is compulsory, you know, it's like, just part of the, the fabric of life. Not that I have ever partook. I've never needed uh, mind-altering uh, altering stimulants, it's just not one thing that I've ever been interested in, but... In Manchester, like, you know, it, it, it's pretty much the norm. You know, they're all whizzed off the tits. Anyway, um, a lot of people get away, get out of the car park. You know, they all get get back to Stockport, because that's the other joke about City fans, that they all from Stockport. So, you know, uh, they don't want a big traffic jam on the A6 going back into Stockport. They don't want to get stuck in Levenjume. You know what I mean? God help them. No. Right. Um, so what I'm going to say, City, R5, I'll be watching on the telly, because I am now an armchair fan. Gave up my season tickets uh, two years ago when we started winning too much, because it just took the fun out of it. I like the, I like a bit of misery when I go and watch football. And, you know, I just got fed up with them winning all the time. Boring. So I'd rather watch it. Oh, I'll watch it. Sat down. We've got Sky. I've paid for the, Well, we've got Virgin. Uh, we've got a Virgin downstairs, and we've got one upstairs. We've got two Virgins in this house. Uh, TiVo and uh, another one so uh, I'll have a bash on that and uh, probably watch uh, Half Five watch City at home so Tottenham Hotspur right so that's what there we are we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that so yeah interesting video um, he gets a lot more views than me obviously I love Craigslist Hunter and I love, um, what's the guy, Adrian, his business partner, Adrian. 
two Polish lads, Polish immigrants into uh, America. Everybody will know who they are. They've got that store. It's a bit like, uh, like a pawn shop. It's not a pawn shop, but it's like a pawn shop. It's a buy and sell shop. So they've got a retail. They do eBay. They do all this. They get in stock. They do house clearances. They used to do uh, really big in the house clearances and all that lot. Lovely business. Um, the cat at the moment, uh, Mr. Milo, is is ill. I, I feel a bit sorry for Mr. Milo. Well, I feel a lot sorry for Mr. Milo at the moment. They have a cat in the shop who they leave in the shop. I think uh, a customer gave it to him years ago. Ginger, ginger cat is lovely. And they have uh, a parrot, uh, not a parrot, uh, it is a member of the parrot family. It's the one with the red head, you know, and the blue body, I can't remember what they're called now. Won't come to me, a macaw, you've got a macaw. I think it's called Ruby, is it called Ruby? Might be, it might be called Ruby. Anyway, I watch that many videos, or listen to that many videos, I get all uh, confused with it all. But anyway... Yeah, so Mr. Milo's sick at the moment. I think he's had some sort of uh, cancer or something. Uh, but they're looking after him, and hopefully he'll get better. He's a lovely cat. He sits there in the shop. He usually sits on the counter and that, but at the moment he, he's not feeling himself anyway. But, you know, he's a good video to watch Crazy Tunner. He's a real seller. It's a real business. Uh, it's not like a lot of these other ones, on e, you know, especially a lot of the American ones who... Big it all up and talk a load of shit. He's a proper, he's a proper guy. I mean, if you're in America, really, uh, and you want to know what the real day-to-day -day grind, and this is a day-to-day -day grind. Now, some people enjoy grind. I like it. You know, I like all this, but some people don't. But anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. So, for me, scavenger life number one. The originators, they've been doing videos for eight, well they don't do videos, do podcasts, all about the scavenger life lifestyle. And they've done pretty well off eBay. From 2008, when they started on eBay, uh, they were living in, they were living in the far, one of the fathers, I think it was uh, Jay's father's basement, and they were living in there, they'd sold the house in San Francisco, or the rented house, or whatever, got rid of it, and they were in the basement, Listed on eBay, making the money. When the financial crash happened in 2008 was when they started that, right? So we're in 2019 now, so that's 11 years ago. From there, they're on the fourth property now. Started off by eBay money, obviously. And then they bought their own house that they've got, and it's a nice big house from what I can gather, and it's got uh, they've got a warehouse on site now. Uh, with all the stock in, proper purpose built, hard floored, you know, a proper building, a, a steel building or whatever, warehouse. And they've got one farmhouse that they use on Airbnb. So obviously they had their eBay income, which produced enough money to go buy a farmhouse and do it up and get it all nice. And uh, rent that out to the holiday market because where they live, there's a lot of like you get a lot of holiday makers with uh, you know it's countryside area, uh, walkers and, and ramblers and stuff like that. So they had th those two running in conjunction, and then they bought another one, and that's been done up. So they've got two of these houses being rented out now on Airbnb, and now they've bought a retail store in the centre of town. They're doing the flat up above, and they're going to turn that into an Airbnb, and then I don't know what they're doing with downstairs. So, obviously, they do eBay, and they're doing all this property developing, and it's all come originally over 11 years from eBay, and living a frugal lifestyle. Extra frugal. They really, really don't waste any money. Um, so, brilliant to watch. I'd recommend listening to them from the beginning, and then just sort of like, as you're working, just listen to a brilliant. Uh, my other U American YouTubers who I still listen to is obviously Craig List Hunter with his buy and sell store and what he does. I mean, the guy does a phenomenal amount of figures on not a massive inventory. He's got a completely different model to me. It's all fast turnaround, high demand stuff uh, that he can pick up for a good price and sell for a good price. And I think he did... Uh, he did a 60 day total of like $100,000 which is about probably about 80 grand in cash a year so it's like doing 40 grand a month 
which makes my 10 grand a month look <laughs> puny, doesn't it really? Uh, although we are on 12 grand at the moment for this month, uh, well, that means that we had one at 8 grand, obviously. So, you know, we're still building, but we'll never get to that sort of level, you know, because the stuff, the stuff we sell and, uh, you know, we'll be able to do it. Plus, I haven't got staff, apart from Ed. He's not staff, he's a business partner. Right, so Craigslist Hunter is the other one. And the other one who comes and goes, uh, but really, really good, knows what he's doing, and that's the crazy pick of life with uh, Wheeler Dealer and Banana Peeler. Now, he's a great bloke, and he's got big family, he's got five or six kids, and he's got a couple of them working now, uh, working with him. And they, sell, they sell cameras and photographic stuff and collectibles and all sorts. Really interesting. Uh, they tend to go on for hours. They could do four or five hour shows. Great to listen to. Yeah. But, anyway, I'm not going to get into UK resellers because you all know who the UK resellers are, most of you. Uh, and they come and go, don't they? Let's face it. Uh, there's some good good ones who stick around for a while uh, and are still making videos. There's some amateurs like me, and then there's the ones who come and go. Who, you know, there's been this phenomena of uh, this is what Craigslist Hunter was talking about that he went into a thrift store and it was dead, and there was loads of stock coming in. He's had eBay uh, sellers contacting him, asking him to buy his whole inventory. So obviously, there's people giving up in America at this moment. There's always people giving up, there's always people starting. But at the moment, according to uh, Peter, Craigslist Hunter, there's more than usual. Now there could be a couple of reasons for this. America's been going through a bit of an economic boom uh, since Trump took over. The businesses, uh, business side of it, the wages, uh, the number of unemployed, it's all gone in a positive direction. I'm not saying that's down to Trump. It could have been started before he took over and he's just riding on the back of it. It could be partly to do with some of the trade deals he's done. It could be any reason, but whatever reason it is, the facts are there's more people in America in work now than there's ever been. Wages are going up. Uh, Hispanic unemployment's dropped. Uh, black unemployment's dropped. And uh, I think uh, Asian unemployment's dropped there. So obviously the country's going up a bit. When the country's going up a bit, people aren't scratching around to try and make money on uh, on the side as much because they're getting a wage or whatever. So that will lo you will lose a few resellers by doing that. Uh, but the thing is that he says, like, you know, obviously the number of resellers is dropping and a lot of the people who were making, were, were making videos over there are suddenly stopping making videos uh, and uh, more than one or two of these are the ones who give you the impression that, you know, you can quit your job on a Friday and in a month's time you can be making a full-time living out of eBay which may be possible, but they make it sound a lot easier than it is. So obviously there's been this boom in people being... I, I don't know why, I just don't like this word, the way that it's suddenly become part of the vernacular these days. Uh, oh, I've been inspired. You know, it, it's just like... I, it's just like one of them overused words, like amazing. You know, everything's amazing now, isn't it? You know, it's like... If you come from Manchester, and like say you get that drink there, if I go to Ed, I could get him a nice drink like that, because he's a Manchester lad, like his dad. Now he wouldn't go, he'd drink that and he'd like it, and he would go, oh, I've just had this drink, and it's amazing, you know, because it's not amazing, it's just a drink, right? So I'd say to him, how was your drink up? Yeah, it's all right. That's it. That means it's good over here. But all this, like, over-flowering of, of, of the English language, like, turning everything into a journey, and, you know, and all this lot. I might be old-fashioned, but to me, it's lazy language. 
its cliched expression and it's a load of bollocks. Right. I don't know why I said that, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so all these people have been inspired to, uh, <laughs> to, to start selling bits and pieces on eBay. Thinking like, oh yeah, just go out, get myself down the charity shop, fill the Skoda or the Clio or whatever with a load of old shit, bag it on eBay and it'll sell and I'll make a fortune. Six months down the line, they've either got a big pile of shit in their house that they can't be bothered listing, or they've give up, or they've realised, hang on a minute, it takes me ten minutes to research, photograph and list an item. So that's six items an hour. I'm missing EastEnders, I'm missing Corrie, I'm missing Britain's Funniest Animals. You know, so people will drop out, and I think it has sort of like this phase. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do you hear that then? Ooh, got another one. Oh, we're on a run, another one. I'm not even going to look, you know, we'll save that for later. I'm not going to do like all the other YouTubers do where they go, oh, let's look what I've just sold. I'm not interested. Tomorrow's work, that. In fact, it's Monday's work. I'm not going to pack it till Monday. You could bloody ka as much as you want. I'm not looking at that phone. It's not why I'm doing this. I've got people to bore instead. Yeah. So. People have been inspired. They want to go on a journey. And we all know that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single footstep. Or a trip into age concern. A few months down the line, it's not going good. So they lose interest. It's a fad. Fads happen, don't they? I remember. I, just let's think of some fads now that have happened in the last four years. Not just reselling. Let's see what we can think of off the top of my head. Fidget spinners. How long did they last? Er. Uh, that game where you find Pokemon in the street, that one. That lasted ages, didn't it? Bloody hell. I mean, some of these things don't last as long as a nun's fart, do they? Uh, what was the next one? Merch by Amazon. Yeah, you know, a couple of people have done really well on it. Everybody gets inspired, opens a merch account. I've not heard one reseller mention merch in the last 12 months. So, what happened to that? These things come and go. Skateboarding, that came, it went, and they've all wheeled past again, it's, it's back again, isn't it? Things happen, BMX bikes, you know. So, it's the same with the selling. The peak of uh, YouTube resellers and people coming into the market, maybe it is over, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a blip. Maybe next year. You know, everyone will be making videos again. I don't know. Not bothered. But it just shows you that how transient and how temporary and how easy it is to sort of like get into this sort of I did what I was gonna nearly say mindset then but that's another word that I don't like get into this thought process uh, and no I haven't swallowed a thesaurus I'm just uh, saying you know it's just one of them other words that I spent years and years selling fitted kitchens and working in retail and I have heard this bullshit a million times I spent 20 odd years in a taxi listening to people chat shit. So, you know, I just don't have a high tolerance for it, uh, unfortunately. I'm not singling anyone out, it's, I'm just making a general comment here. And I'll probably get 16 gazillion thumbs downs, but again, I couldn't give a monkey's nipple about that. Anyway, so, maybe it is 
but reselling let's let's get it right here reselling's not changed customers are still there you've just heard all them kachings there if that wasn't me with my foot on the kaching effects pedal like a rock concert you know that was real kachings badinga donga dingas ping ping pings anyway uh, so God, this is turning into a rat ad style ramble. Now, ads, look at ads. He's stuck at it. Doing well. Still does his videos. Selling. Nick and Andrea. They've been doing it for, since God was a kid. A bit, you know. They're, they're doing it, aren't they? Sarah Bex. They're doing it. But there's thousands of other people who were doing it who you just don't hear of them anymore. They've disappeared into the mists. Ooh. But look, some of them could still be doing it, but just not bothering to tell anybody they're doing it. Because they can't be asked making videos. I went through that phase. I used to make a video every week, sales video, and show you a screenshot of everything that sold in detail. I did that for about, about 18 months. Then I got fed up with it. And I took them all down. I deleted all the videos. They're not even on YouTube anymore. They're not even in my private collection anymore. Um, just took them all down. And then I've had a break, uh, I've had a brain injury, and decided to come back uh, with a more generalised show, and a more sort of like the mechanics of eBay show, rather than like, yeah, I'll tell you what to go and buy, you know, uh, come, come and buy this, I, 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 and you'll make a fortune. First of all, I wouldn't want to be blamed for that when the bottom falls out of the market, and secondly, I don't want to ruin the old market. Uh, and, and, and give people too much information over the stuff that I source uh, and where to buy it and how much to pay because I don't want to end up having to pay double for stock uh, is that a message or is that a ka -ching? Oh, oh it's another one see that god knows what's going on here anyway right so According to Craigslist Hunter, getting back on point. According to Craigslist Hunter, Peter, he thinks there's been a, um, a gross underestimation by people how hard it is to do this job. Now, I'll tell you, it's a slog. Five years in. Yeah, we've done nearly four grand this week. Which sounds like a lot of money. Well, it is a lot of money, isn't it? You know, four grand. But that's not like... I can't just get into my wallet now. Let's see what I've got in my wallet. I don't carry a lot of cash. Four grand. I've got 40 quid in my wallet. I've got a bit of money in the bank. And maybe PayPal and my credit cards are paid off. But I've got bills. So last week it's paid two grand to the VAT man. Right. So it sounds a lot of money, but there's a lot, a lot of costs. Uh, stock, like I say, paid nine grand for stock a few weeks ago. That's starting to come back in now. Money off that, money off the other stuff. But to build up to three hundred and sixty-eight thousand pounds worth of stock at retail has took a long time. And if you look at that, three hundred and sixty-eight thousand listed, three thousand seven hundred sold. It's one percent of the value of that stock has gone in a week. But, on the other hand, I could stop listing now if I was just wanted to, just stop listing and just let that shop tick away and I would probably get a decent income for a number of years now because I've done all the work up front. But it's been a lot of work. Never underestimate the amount of work needed to do this. You've got your sourcing time, which could be one or two days a week, could be a morning a week. Or it could be like me, where I get people sending me a text message saying, oh, I've got a load of this, do you want it? Or I get the guy at the, who does the flea market and says, oh, yeah. Or I go and look on an auction site and I buy a load of stuff. Or I go on eBay and I pick some stuff and it gets delivered to me. So, you know, I've fine-tuned that. But you've got sourcing time. You've got research time. You've got listing time. Photographing time. And if you're selling clothes, you should have cleaning time as well because you're supposed to clean all your clothes before you, you list them. As I keep telling you on the eBay rules. So there's a lot involved. And I think a lot of people 
get misled by these oh isn't it great videos uh, blah de blah de blah without looking into the mechanics of the business and also a lot of people don't know the difference between gross and net um, and it's the old uh, the old cliche isn't it turnovers vanity profit sanity that's the other one which does my head in that one because you know there's a lot more to it than that so yeah there may have been a blip in the reselling world but it may all come back I don't think there's any less sales we've had our best month ever and uh, it's August what's November going to be like if I keep listing like I'm listed now you know I would hazard a guess that it'll probably grow a little bit more so yeah so all of you if you want to have a watch watch Craigslist Hunter and see what you think on that video it's very interested uh, I, I think it is anyway so right now the last thing we're going to do is eBay rules and then we're going to do a poem which is an absolute classic this is going to be an hour long show strap yourselves in maybe sit in an electric chair and wake yourself up every five minutes let's have a look this is Artifact, artifacts, archives, antiques, cultural items and grave related items. So it's all the really, really old stuff. Now this is one that we may have to be careful, especially if you're like me, you like a bit of the old stuff, you know. Uh, artifacts, cultural goods and grave related items can be of significant cultural and personal value. And may be legally protected. So this is basically, uh, you know, don't go around s selling bits of stolen pyramid and stuff like that, I should imagine. So there's all these different people. Many artifacts, antiques and grave related items are protected under national laws and government bodies. Though you can list certain artifacts, grave related items and other related items, you, be, you may need to meet a few requirements to sell them. So eBay cooperates with the following departments and organisations. So these are the people who are going to dob you in if you're selling something that you shouldn't be. So don't go on a package holiday to Egypt and start getting your chisel out and chipping a bit off the Sphinx's nose, what's left of it, and try to sell it on eBay. You're going to get in trouble. Right, so in the UK, these are the people. Department of Culture, Media and Sport. They're going to be watching. Department of the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. The British Museum, the Portable Antiquities Scheme, Natural England and the National Archives. So, here is the guidelines. This is quite in depth actually. What are the guidelines? Archaeological objects. Sellers on eBay may have a legal obligation to report archaeological finds. These obligations obligations depend on where the item was found please say our, see our antiquities buying guide now this probably means like people who do metal detecting you've got to be very very careful with this so restricted sellers listed items of potential treasure found in england and wales before september 1997 should be able to provide proof that the items reported under the law of treasure trove so basically if you're selling a sword hilt from Sutton Who, uh, you know, you'd have to have a certificate to prove that you know you're legally entitled to it. You can't go digging up some Roman coins and sticking them on eBay. Uh, you know, you, you're under the Treasure Trove Act. That will probably include things found at sea as well, I should imagine, because everything on the seabed belongs to the Crown Estates. Uh, sellers listed items of potential treasure found in England and Wales after the 27th, 4th of September 1997 should be able to provide proof that items were reported under the Treasure Act. Sellers must be able to provide either Crown Disclaimer documents or fines. Treasure number and include those within the listed fines that do not fall under the definition of treasure but are recorded. With the portable antiquity scheme will have a unique reference number which the seller should list. 
Sellers listing items found in Scotland should include a disclaimer certificate in the listing that shows the item have been reported and they have been given legal entitlement to be sold. Now, this is where you're going to have to be careful with this. If you're buying this sort of stuff at uh, an auction, uh, which can happen, you're going to need documentation off the auction house. If they can't provide documentation, basically don't buy it. Sellers listing items found in Northern Ireland should produce a certificate from the Northern Ireland. So they're all the same, they're, they're all the different places. So here we are, not allowed. Archaeological finds that haven't been reported in accordance with the law. So obviously eBay are doing this because there's laws in place. It's basically to stop people digging up archaeological sites and flogging it. Archives. Now this is one that is pretty... Oh, I don't know. This is... This is a dodgy one, archives. The sale of public records documents is illegal. Restriction on selling these items is based on various laws, including the Public Record Acts, the manorial document rules, tithe rules, parochial records and registers measure, local government acts and the data protection acts. Not allowed, public records and related documents. So you cannot sell anything that counts as a public record. Cultural goods. Cultural goods are objects of historical, architectural or archaeological interest. Under EU law, cultural goods include archaeological goods more than 100 years old. So that would even now be something that was dug up on a battlefield of World War I in 1915. Uh, pictures and paintings over 50 years old, where the value exceeds £119,000. Well, we're all going to be selling some of them, aren't we? Of course. All us lot. Watercolours over 50 years old, where the value is over 23000 Mosaics over 50 years old, where the value is over 11000 Books over 100 years old, where the value is over 39000 Manuscripts. Manuscripts over 50 years old, whatever their value. Uh, printed maps over 200 years old, over 11,000. And other items more than 100 years old, where the value exceeds 39,000. So please follow these guidelines when listing related items on eBay. For items outside this non-exhaustive list, updates... And the above list, please check the information about UK export licensing for cultural goods on the Arts Council website. So, uh, that's what they all count as cultural goods. There must be some sort of duty that's got to be paid on those. Uh, sellers based in the Republic of Ireland should contact the Department of Arts, Heritage, and the Gale Tact. Allowed export of stamps, birth, marriage or death certificates, letters written by or to the exporter. Export of personal property by the manufacturer or producer. Yeah, it's obviously it's inter trade. It's inter inter EU trade this. Restricted export of antiquities and other cultural goods is subject to both UK and EU controls. Under UK law, any item manufactured or produced more than 50 years before the date of exportation requires an export licence. Some exceptions mentioned above exist. So that's obviously uh, it's these value, it's high value items basically. So you need an export licence if you're sending something really high value. Not allowed. Tainted cultural goods illegally excavated or removed after the 30th of December 2003. Looted or stolen goods. The International Council of Museums Red List database identifies, categorises cultural goods most vulnerable to illicit traffic. So, cave formations. Now, I don't even know what this is. It must be rocks out of caves. Allowed. Cave formations lawfully taken off private land. Restricted spelithums, stalactites, 
stalagmites taken from caves which have been designated as sites of special scientific interest if a prior consent has been obtained from natural England. So again, you'd have to have a certificate for that. Not allowed. Spelithums, stalactites, stalagmites taken from caves designated as SSI if you're not allowed to take them from there. And then the last one is historical graves, tombstones or related markers. Allowed new grave markers and burial plots. So obviously a cemetery can advertise a burial plot and new grave markers is obviously a memorial mason. Not allowed historical graves, tombstones and related markers. So you can't sell old tombstones. Now I've seen French ones on here, uh, French uh, raw iron grave markers, but any of you going to the Bracons, uh stay away from them. So that's it, again, with all that sort of really old historical stuff, you're going to have to be au fait with all the acts, all the different acts, and don't sell anything that's worth a lot of money, basically, otherwise you'd export licence if you sell it abroad. You'd have to put it on UK only. So that's it. So, we are going to finish with a poem, of course. Uh, it's gone on a bit tonight, but synopsis of the show is some resellers are not making as many videos, resellers are not going to thrift stores in America, uh, there's a glut of stock, there's less sellers, because it's hard work, and all these get-rich-quick sellers have knocked the bollocks out of it. So that's basically, that's basically that. We've had conditional discharge, a poem about uh, VD, STIs or STDs or whatever else you want to call them. We had uh, Winston Churchill singing Hellbent for Leather by Judas Priest. Um, and then we had Love is the Drug. We've had eBay rules on graves and grave markers. What a jolly show this has been. Bloody hell. We've had a load of ka which were real. I think. Yeah. eBay notifications. Right. Uh, right. So. I hope that's not all them things I've just listed before. All sold straight away. That means I'm underpriced if it is. Don't look now. Anyway. Let's do the poem. Let's go to something cultural. Now it's quite a long poem this. And it's a John Betjeman special. And it's a poem about love. And it's a really nice one. 1930s. So it'd be a little bit dated. But it's good. And it's a classic. And it's called Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. Furnished and burnished by Aldershot's son. What strenuous singles we played after tea. We in the tournament. You against me. Love 30. Love 40. A weakness of joy. The speed of a swallow. And grace of a boy. With carefulness, carelessness, gaily you won. I'm weak from your loveliness, Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. Miss Joan Hunter Dunn, Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. How mad I am, sad I am, glad that you won. The warm-handled racket is back in its press. But shock-headed Victor, she loves me no less. Her father's anonymous shines as we walk. We swing past the summer house buried in talk and cool the veranda that welcomes us in to the six o'clock news and lime, ja lime juice and gin. The scent of the conifers, the sound of the bath, the view of my bedroom of moss dappled path as I struggle with double end evening tie for we dance at the golf club, my victor and I. On the floor of her bedroom lie blazer and shorts <clears throat> and the cream coloured walls are betrothed with sports. Of westering questioning settles the sun on your low headed window, Miss Joan Hunter Dunn. The hillman is waiting, the lights in the hall, the pictures of Egypt are bright on the wall. 
My sweet I am standing beside the oak stair, And there on the landing the light on your hair. By rose not adopted, by woodlanded ways, She drove to the club in the late summer haze. It's a nine o'clock Camberley, heavy with bells, And mushroomy, pine woody, evergreen smells. Miss Joan Hunts are done, Miss Joan Hunts are done, I can hear from the car park the dance has begun. O oh, sorry twilight, importunate band, O oh, strongly adorable tennis girl's hand. Around us are rovers and Austin's afar, Above us the intimate roof of the car. And here on my right is the girl of my choice, With a tilt of her nose and a chime in her voice. And the sense of her rap and the words never said, And the onimus onimus damping her. A dancing ahead we sat in the car park till twenty to one and now i'm engaged to miss joan hunter dunn she sounds a nice sort doesn't she you know or was that just a dogging trip we will never know will we down to interpretation anyway i'm going to sign off now bit of ramble bit of good week uh, just gonna have a little sip of Pellegrini and say good night. So good night, tatty bye, sleep tight.